Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. Before I begin today's lesson, I have a question. If I want to know about God, where do I look? In the Bible! The Bible tells me I can look at what God made and I can figure out there is a God. I can figure out he's big and strong, but that's all I can know. If I want to know if he loves me or what sin is or how to get to heaven, I have to look in the Bible. Well, we have been going through the book of Acts and figuring out, so what are we supposed to do now that we have learned that Jesus is the Messiah, that he's paid for our sins by dying on the cross and proven he was God by rising from the dead? Now what? So Jesus had given the disciples a very specific instruction before he went back to heaven. He said they were to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So in the beginning of the book of Acts, everything had started just where Jesus said it needed to, in Jerusalem. Then we got to Acts chapter 7, and the church had gone where he said to go to next, to Judea and to Samaria. And we had watched as Philip, in particular, had taken the gospel into Samaria. But at the end of last week's lesson, we had seen the first step of the church going to the ends of the earth. God had told Philip that he needed to go to a very unusual place, down to the desert road, 50 miles away from where he was teaching the people in Samaria, and Philip had obeyed. He had gone 50 miles south without any further instruction other than go to that road. And on that road, he gets there and God tells them, go to that chariot. And so he goes to that chariot, and the man is an Ethiopian eunuch, He's reading the scroll of the prophet Isaiah and using that exact passage of scripture, Philip gets to tell him all about Jesus, the Messiah. And the eunuch believes. He repents of his sins, he's baptized, and then Philip just disappears. The Lord whisks him away and leaves him almost 20 miles away in Astos, and the Ethiopian eunuch goes home. And now the church is starting to spread to the ends of the earth because that Ethiopian unit goes home with the gospel. And now we're going to be in Acts chapter 9 and we are going to see the gospel go forward in another whole new area as the church spreads outside of Israel. So grab your Bibles. We'll be in Acts chapter 9 and let's see what God does next. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. So he went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue in Damascus so that if he found anyone there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might bring them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. So, and he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. Now the men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but they didn't see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind. He didn't eat or drink anything. Now in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. And the Lord called to him in a vision and said, Ananias. 
And the Lord, he said, yes, Lord. The Lord said, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he's praying. In a vision, he's seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm he's done to your saints in Jerusalem. He's come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest anyone who calls on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. So Ananias went to the house and entered it. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it, and placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus, who appeared to you on the road on your way coming here, has sent me to you that you may see again and be full of the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see. And he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. So let's go back through today's lesson and make sure that we understand what is happening here. So Saul, we had seen at the stoning of Stephen. He had been there watching everybody's clothes while he, Stephen had been murdered for the accusation of blasphemy because he was telling everyone about Jesus. And then Saul had gone through and started ravaging the church. He had gone from house to house and drug off disciples and put them in prison. But he wasn't satisfied with just persecuting the church in Jerusalem. Oh, no. He wanted to make sure that this group of rebellious people was squashed out everywhere. So he went to the high priest to get letters to go to Damascus. Now, Damascus is not even in Israel. Damascus is 150 miles away from Jerusalem. It takes four to six days to walk there, but is the next nearest large city outside of Israel. And it has a large Jewish population and word had gotten to Saul. It also was starting to have a large population of Christians. And so he gets this letter from the high priest and he heads off for Damascus, determined to arrest anyone who belongs to the way. And he's not going to bring justice to them in Damascus. Did you catch where he was going to take them? Right back to Jerusalem. He wanted to make sure that the high priest and the Sanhedrin was involved in absolutely wiping out this group of rebellious believers. But what Saul didn't know is that despite everything Saul has done, all of the lies he's told himself, and all the ways he's rejected God, God hasn't rejected Saul. And so Saul's going along the road on the way to Damascus, ready to squash the church, and God meets him on the way. All of a sudden, he's surrounded by light. He hears God speak. He falls to the ground, and Jesus himself confront Saul and says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He doesn't say, why are you persecuting my church? Why are you persecuting me? Because when you persecute the church, Jesus sees it as persecuting him, not just the people. And so Saul is struck blind. He's led by the hand into Damascus. Now what is he going to do? Those letters don't do him a whole lot of good when he can't even see people, right? 
So he locks himself into this room and for three days he won't eat, he won't drink, and he is finally having to come to grips with what he's done. He has been so committed to unity in the Jewish faith and his desire for unity that he has rejected God's Messiah, he has committed murder, he has thrown people in prison, he has tracked down the church, he has done everything he can to destroy God's own work. He's done it in the name of unity, but he has missed God's plan. And so as he sits here in this silence for three days, again, God speaks to him. God comes to him in another vision and says, Saul, a man named Ananias is going to come restore your sight. And in the meantime, then God reveals himself to Ananias in a vision and tells him, hey, this man Saul, he tells him exactly where he's staying. Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street so that he knows exactly where to go. And he has been told in a vision that a man named Ananias is going to come restore his sight. So Ananias is not going to get out of this. You have to wonder if Ananias was thinking, why can't you pick another disciple? But he'd already told Paul his name, so he's stuck. He has to obey. So he goes to this house in fear and trembling and approaches Saul, restores his sight, and Saul believes by this third day, Saul has finally come to the end of himself. He has repented of his sins. He has believed that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus proved he was all along. He's realized that the one that was wrong wasn't Jesus. It was Saul. He repents. He's baptized. He takes some food. And God has told Ananias, even though he hasn't told Saul yet, that he has a purpose for this. Saul is his chosen instrument to carry on the next part of the commission. Remember, it was Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And Saul, we're going to find, is going to be the one leading the charge, taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. So this story humbles me just like the story of the Ethiopian eunuch. Because in both of these cases, God miraculously intervenes. For the eunuch, he's intervening for somebody who already loved him and was diligently seeking him with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength. That eunuch had gone through so much to get to God. And then God also intervenes for Saul. And Saul's on the complete other end of the spectrum. You couldn't find anyone more opposite from the Ethiopian eunuch. So the Ethiopian eunuch. He's far from God. Saul is supposed to be right with God. He's a Jew. He's a Pharisee. He's a disciple of Gamaliel, of all people. He's been with the Sanhedrin. He knows the high priest. He's supposed to know God, and yet he doesn't know God at all. And God still chases him down. What an amazing God we serve, that he will go after people people like the eunuch, and people like Saul. So this is, again, this is humbling, and I hope you kids are listening. God loves you, and he's chasing you down with the gospel through the book of Acts and the rest of the Bible. And so when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. You need to listen like that Ethiopian eunuch and be quick to repent quick to believe Jesus is Messiah. And if you have been hardening your heart, learn a lesson from Saul. Don't wait for God to have to smack you on the road to Demaeus. Repent. Please, please, please repent. Tell God that you're sorry for your sins. Ask him to help you believe the gospel. Return to Jesus and be saved. So thanks for listening, and I am looking forward to answering any questions you have.